Yada, welcome. Hi, I'm Jill, um, also known as T and Yarn on Ravelry and Instagram. Um, welcome along to Cup of Tea and a Yarn. This is where I just like sit and chat about what I'm making. Uh, today is a lot of hats. So I've made a lot of hats. Um, what else do you need to know? It's Sunday. Um, I think it's about the 14th or something of November. Um, lunchtime. I have to get this done so that then we're going to transform the um, the craft room office spare bedroom into a proper spare bedroom. My parents are going to come and stay for a couple of weeks, so um, yeah, make it nice for them. I've had to pack away some yarn so I could give them some space. Um, <laughs> I haven't got any sets of drawers, and it'd be quite nice for them to unpack their um, suitcase. They're in the middle of a moving house. So I've emptied these things so that they can use those as drawers. So hopefully it's not too bad. I had to empty the wardrobe, my half of it. Yeah, busy. Anyway, other things I've been busy at is knitting a lot of hats. So um, last time, I think I told you I was going um, popping to Wellington to see my friends for Christmas and I always give them stuff. And I always make things and I've been a bit slack this year because I hadn't actually made anything so I decided to make hats um, also as part of the um, the Kiwi Summer KCAL I've tried to pick majority New Zealand designers and when I haven't got New Zealand designers I've got New Zealand yarn and indie, di indie dyers so so I just head into it and tell you all about all the hats there are quite a few there aren't this many people that I normally make for, but then I started making for partners. And I thought, oh, I'll just make another one. I'll just make another one. Um, so now I'm at the point where I've made nine and it's not it's too many for just my friends, but it's not enough for everybody. So I'm going to have to keep on going. Um, I got a bit bored yesterday of making hats, so I've stopped and I'm making something different altogether, which has got nothing to do with anything, but I'll talk about that as well in a minute. <laughs> so I thought I'd show you all the different hats and um, who made them, or who designed them, I made them, and the yarn, and um, yeah, what I kind of found, I guess. So, hat number one. Now, I haven't washed any of these either, so it's just... As they've come off the needles. So hat number one is called the Cafe Hat and it's by Wei S. Li Wei? S. Leong and um, I've knit it with my hand spun um, heavenly, uh, heavenly wool half breed. Um, I love this, I love this colour, I just think it's fab. Um, this had like a little rib, no it's not a rib, it is a rib but within the rib there is a cable all the way around so I thought that was quite fun I don't think the yarn shows it off to its best but if you can see it it kind of wiggles like that I hope that's supposed to be what it looked like yeah so yeah it's a bit of a slouchy hat um I've put also on all of them some little um what do you call those things labels labels there's a handmade ones so if it's got my um, hand spun up, put handmade labels on. I got those from the Yarn Queen and they are um, Carly and the Machine labels, which I got quite a few of but I've never used. Anyway, so hat number one. Hat number two is Delphinia by Louise Robinson um, and this is also my hand spun and the um, colourway is called Smoky Topaz. I couldn't remember what that colourway was. Anyway, this one's Smoky Topaz and it's Anna Gretton and it's a mixture of a few different things including some glitter. Um, yeah, it's got this cool kind of um, lace piece there, down there, which is really cool. And again, this is another little slouchy hat. Handmade. <laughs> that was hat number two. Hat number three we've seen before. This is Tarama Tarama by Renee Paku. Um, and I have knit that with 
the grey is my hand spun merino silk, which I'm pretty sure I got from Lynn that five bit ago. Um, the speckly yarn that I've used, uh, what to call it, the contrast, which must have some grey in because it kind of disappears every so often, um, with some leftover Nana Cindy, um, one of a kind that glows in the dark. It'd be so fun if I could wear that in the glow in the dark. One of my friends is a DJ. It'd be good if he could wear it because he'd have the blue light. I think it would work under the blue light. Maybe I'll tell him it's for him. And have to wear it while he's DJing. <laughs> anyway, I don't know. Do you still have blue lights at like clubs and stuff? Oh, it's been so long since I've been. Well, last time I went was with him. Um, Andrew and I went partying in Wellington. Good to go with the DJ. Um, anyway, Tarama Tarama was hat number three. Um, hat number four, this is called West Coast and it is um, a design, well, the company, well the ladies um, design company is called Mana, I don't know her name, I probably could have looked but I didn't. Um, and my yarn is a merino silk, which I think came again from um, Lynn at Five to Go, and it is plied with a Polworth, which I got from Jim Book Carding. Yeah, I think it might be a pole. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's just Polworth. There's anything else in it. Seem to have imported a lot of my hand spun. So I was like, hmm, I did put labels on things, but I'm, yeah, some of the labels were a bit late. All right, itchy nose again today. Really windy, lots of pollen. So the mana hat. This has got really cool, really subtle. Well, yeah, it was I like slip stitches and cables. I got to it's supposed to go all the way to the it's supposed to go all the way to the top. Um, I got to here and I got lost in the pattern and I got lost a few times and I kept pulling it back. So I just stopped. It's like it's a hat, it's not worth all of that angst. So I just did occasional slip stitches around and you know kind of made it look like the texture just sort of disappeared, <laughs> disappeared into the crown. Very um technical kind of thing. So there we go. Really like this. I think it's quite a cool hat. Oh yeah, just like a beanie. They look like the Trama Trama a beanie as well. Cool. That was number four. Number five. Number five is called Bright Spark and it's by um, Elizabeth Niho Niho. And the yarn is again another Heavenly Wool um, half weed mix. Uh, this is very cool. So this one's got, um, it's got like a, I think it's a faux cable, so I didn't use my cable needle, which I'm quite enjoying, which I got, um, where, got it in March, but, um, but unwind in Dunedin, and I had never used a cable needle before, well, no, I haven't, I've never used a cable needle before. My one time I'd done a cable, I'd just used a double pointed needle and I got it from the Hani Hoolies. I think um, the lady who owns Hani Hooli, Hoo, her husband, I think made it. And it was, it's a glass one. It's very beautiful. I didn't bring it to show you. Anyway, I didn't use it for this hat. <laughs> I did use it for this one though. That's cool. Oh, and for the first one, which I showed you, I had the cable in the, in the rib. <laughs> Back to this one. So Elizabeth Niho Niho, called Bright Sparks. Um, it's got a faux cable and then it kind of disappears into into just like a rib. It's a very cool beanie. I was just looking at that to see what it was and if I'd lost, if I'd done a weird um, thing with my knitting. But I've actually done a weird thing with my spinning and it's just a blob. So let's just pretend that's not there. This seems to have been a bit of a thing. Anyway, um, I love the love the colours that have popped up in here. Um, I think must have done this as a 
I do remember doing this actually and when I was knitting it I noticed as well so I, I had never applied this so when you do the like a crochet chain um, so then the colours don't mix whereas on this one uh, obviously the colours all mixed so I'd um, applied it back on itself this one not so it came up with stripes um, I liked this beanie so much I made it again um, and this time I made it um, without the faux cable and I just did a um, every other row I did a pearl stitch in the middle of the of the rib just for a bit of a change um, this yarn is so the fiber was from um, got it written down here a dye candy so this is a dye candy fiber I'm sorry I can't remember who um, sorry what the what the what it's made of I bought it I know I bought it in Dunedin at Unwind from Nana Cindy <laughs> that's where I bought it from so I've made also um, which I think I did show you ages ago Look here. So I've also made a scarf. So I wove a scarf out of it. So I did have a hat and scarf to match. Mm. I could give this as a present to my friend who's having me, couldn't I? She gets a hat and a scarf. Or I could just keep the scarf and give it next year when I make when I do my scarves, which is what I wanted to do. I wanted to weave everyone's scarves. But I only did one. Right, a bit of waffle again, keep that off track. Die Candy, Bright Spark, Elizabeth, Nico, Nico. There we go. And then we kind of went off the New Zealand designers. So that was one, two, three, four, five, five New Zealand designers, which I think was quite a good effort. Um, because I was doing it a um, kind of DK weight um, and I don't know, I was kind of, um, I don't know, I just couldn't get inspired by any of the others. So I looked on my ones I've got of my favourites on Ravelry and, and I went and got some more. Um, oh, I think it was because some of them looked really cool but looked like they might um, be too hard to do and take too much effort and thought process so some of them had beautiful cables and that sort of thing and it's like my, my few that I did had a little cable and I did make one that had a cable down the front and I kept going wrong with it um so I just stopped and also a lot of my yarn is um as you see it's a little bit um that's the yarn itself is like variegated or patterned so you'd lose a lot of the the little um nuances of the design and the I'm gonna say messiness but that's not the right word the in the fussiness I don't know in, in the yarn anyway the yarn wouldn't show it up very well yeah so it wasn't that there was a lack of hats that I liked it was ones that I by then I was kind of getting a bit sick of making hats which is why I don't like it, yeah. It's why when people say, why don't you make things to sell? It's like, but then people ask you to make things and you'd want to make something different all the time. Well, I would. I mean, you've seen how many works in progress I have, so I like to have lots, lots going on. Okay, so as I say, I went to my favourites um, on Ravelry and which hats I'd put in there to see what I wanted to make. So this was the next one. This is called Gabe. And this is by Julie Nitz in Paris. Um, by now, I'm thinking I'm quite a good, um, good at the whole construction of hats in DK weight. So I kind of know how many stitches to cast on and that kind of stuff. So the Gabe hat is actually for really thick yarn. So you're supposed to use four, four plies to hold together or to, two DKs held together um, 
I didn't want to. I thought that was too fat, although in Wellington I probably could have gone away with it. Um, so I used two DK, sorry, no, I didn't. I used two four plies. So my two four plies, one of them is, I don't know, it's an Anna Grayton crepe. The other one is a merino, which, a merino silk, or it might be even a merino sock yarn. That I know is a New Zealand inter dyer, but I don't know who. I've had it for a very long time. So I held them two together and I made this one. So the Julie that's in Paris gave. Um, this has such a fun texture. So it was kind of annoying to do because it was like constantly slipping stitches. But if you look like it looks like it's been um woven doesn't it that's like that's very cool and then there's like a twisted rib um on the crown as well which i really like too so yeah so i really like this hat and i'm actually might make myself one because i think it's quite cool I might make it a bit bigger and make it a slouchy it's quite like slouchies yeah so i quite like that one so that was that one the next one so this one isn't this one I couldn't even think about putting into the um, the Kiwi the Kiwi Summer K Cal. Um, it is New Zealand wool, but not a New Zealand indie dyer. So it is. Um, I had lots of um, Outlaw Bandit yarn left over, so I just put some of those together. Um, the hat itself is a pattern called Basic Simple Lazy by John. Ben, Bainer, Braga, Banager, I don't know, he's not a Kiwi, um, it's a free pattern on Ravelry, um, I made it into a little bit of a, a my own little colour scheme, so I, I played with some patterning, um, I did some slip stitches, and just put different, and different colours in as I went. Um, this was a different top for me. This one had one of those tops, which is why I wanted to make it as like, well, a, a crown. Um, the others had quite rapid decreases and then you just like sewed it together at the top. Whereas this one, the decreases started quite far out. Yeah. And I'd seen ones like this and I wanted to make that kind of construction just to have a look at it. I made all of these on my like likey, they're called likey, wooden circulars. I have a 3.25 and a 3.75. 3.25 did the rib, the 3.75 did the hat. And I didn't, I wasn't going to, I was going to say I didn't care, but that's not the right words. Because I did care, because I did look at what the designers suggested. Um, and most, um, the majority of the time, the 375 was okay. And if, if it was less than that, I just used the 325, which I don't think I did for any of them the whole way. Hmm. Anyway, they seem to have worked. The truth will be when people put them on anyway. So there we go. Um, this one, because it went the same as this one, because it, they weren't my hand spun, they had a different label. So these guys had the handmade label on. See that? There, handmade. And these ones I've got, ta-da, instead. And I quickly had the sewing machine out yesterday and zoos them all up because the sewing machine has to get put away as well. Whilst, whilst mum and dad are here. Although they do go before I go to Wellington. My last hat um, is, is my made up one. So this is um, a little bit of a slouchy, stripy hat. So it does, it does the slouch. Um, I did the same circumference as I did for the others. So mostly it's 100. I usually do about between... 90 and 100. I think one of them had 102 just because of the pattern. Um, but yeah, it's about 100. 
and then small needles, then bigger needles. Um, my slouchies measure from my inside of my elbow to my wrist. It's, um, my, that's my measuring tool. The others um, were whatever, I think it was like this one, um, was I think like five inches or something. Um, yeah, whatever they've said for the beanies is what, the, what, was what I did. But the slouchies were, that was, that's, the, that's the right length for a slouchy for me anyway, for, in my eyes. Um, the yarn, the black yarn is a New Zealand, just like a wool and it had the like 100% wool that I'd left on it but didn't say where from. So I'm unsure, it could potentially be an old skeins one that I've had lying around for a long time. And the different color stripes. So it, it looks very like just pink or not pink on the camera, but it actually goes like through blues and lighter blues, and then it kind of goes into lighter pink, and then it goes into lighter pink again, as well as this bright, bright stuff. That's my hand spun. Um, and I had made a pair of socks out of that, and it was the, I had two 100 gram fiber, Plats, plats, good. I was going to say blobs, but no, plats is a better word. And um, one was um, from Die Happy, and one was from Stitch Punk. And I'd spun them both separately, then I applied them together, and um, I, yeah, I made a pair of socks out of them. So I used my leftovers for that hat. I quite like it. I think this is quite a cool hat. Slouchy, that's why I'm holding it like that. Slouchy. What about the black? bottom but yeah I think that once I wash them they'll get a bit softer mm. I was, trying, I was going to do that today but never mind I won't now so that is all of my finished objects quite quick eh the um the hats tended to take around about a day um the this one took a little bit longer because it was so slip stitchy um, so that was about a day, that was about two days, um, the same as this one because of the slip stitching and the um, cabling, that was my, me, me using my cable needle, yeah, so those ones took a bit longer because of the whole pattern thing, which is why I didn't want to do anything too pattern-y. <laughs> um, I think if I do a couple more, there should be enough for everyone who's going. I'm guessing that everyone's going. And I'm pretty sure they don't watch this, so they will never know. And if they do, then they can like maybe decide up front which one they want the best. Anyway, <laughs> um, I am wearing my Birkenlinden puff. That, um, I showed you last time that I didn't wear. Um, yeah, so I've worn it a couple of times now and I'm getting to like this. I think the sleeves look better on than they do when I was showing it to you. I just, I love this. It was really pretty. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm wearing. Um, yesterday, with the hats, I kind of had enough. And I thought, well, I could pick up any of my whips and my socks that I'm making with the fabulous yarn from Man Made Fiber. I could pick up my cardigan, which I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think I have a cardigan block. Maybe I just need to not make the cardigan and make something different with that beautiful um, yeah, I'm from Prosper. Yeah, mm. I'll think about it. And yeah, I could even have made my my Baltic zigzaggy one, but in the end, I thought I'd try something new. And I was like, oh, I'm just going to make something fun. 
Not that the hats weren't fun, but I wanted to make them something fun. And I don't know if you remember last week I got this book of the library, which is the Arne and Carlos um, Ultimate Collection for Arne and Carlos. And I wanted to make one of these sock yarn teddy bears. So yesterday I started. <laughs> Um, I'm using for my sock yarn teddy bear some um, Admiral Arduck, which is um, shopper wool. It's a colour waiver Admiral Arduck. So, sock yarn, probably not going to be the softest teddy bear ever. And you help me pick which sock yarn to use. So far, I have made an ear, a leg, and an arm. So, ear, ear, leg, arm. Like that. So, the way they say to do it, so you do this, you do an ear, a leg, and an arm. No, sorry, other way around, a leg, an arm, and an ear. Then you do it again, you do a leg, an arm and an ear, and you're supposed to find the bit in the yarn and copy it. But I think because my yarn is such quite, I mean, this is quite thick stripes, isn't it? Um, I'm just going to do it randomly. So I've just started my next leg, and my next leg's going to start with blue. So then it's going to go blue and then it goes up there with blue, purple, green. Hmm. So I'll just be slightly off. I think. Yeah. I just got rid because I had to fin I had to start the next colour and because the ear had already started on the red, I had to get rid of the red. So the one after red was blue. So that's why it's blue. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I like it. I like it so much. I think it's so fun. So yeah, you, um, as I say, you do each of these things individually and you put them on um, um, needles. I was going to call them sticks. Put them on needles to hold them. Um, until you finished all of the bits then you kind of go and you get your two legs together and you do your body and then you attach the arms so you have this minimum amount of sewing I imagine you need to sew the ears on yeah I'm guessing it's quite cool so the saying to do it um, on these little things on the DPNs which I'm not I'm doing mine on um, magic loop. Um, I did try because um, it asks the four, let me tell you the size of the needle. It's saying to use um, a US size 1.5 which is a 2.5 millimeter which is what these are. I thought right well I'll do what I'm told and I'll use these needles but oh my gosh it was so fiddly. I'm not used to in the round on double pointed and I did want to I was kind of going well I could challenge myself to do it um, but uh, I just gave up I kept giving up because it just got annoying and in the end it's very easy for me to do it on a magic loop so that's what I'm doing and um, my needles are 2.25 which probably is better anyway for me and um my it's probably the gauge doesn't really matter but the closeness of the um of the stitches probably does um never knitted a toy before yeah funny how um like you get a book and have a look through and you see things you wouldn't normally see there's actually a free pattern on ravelry as well um, well, I think it's also, you can like pay a couple of dollars on their website as well. Um, but it's not a pattern I would have sought out 
to make and my friends have made some fabulous things one of my knitting friends made a gorgeous um, t uh, um animal doll what a rabbit <laughs> which was just so beautiful and it's like that would be so cool um i don't know i just didn't feel like i should i didn't feel like i needed to not needed to but wanted to i didn't feel the pull to another of my friends makes those gnomes and like wow they're so cool as well maybe after this i'll get a a taste for them um I guess because I've crocheted an amigurami, you know, crocheting the round really tightly for any kind of dolls and that sort of thing. And I've done that quite a bit. So I kind of was, well, you know, that if I was going to make something like a Dalek, for instance, I'd crochet it rather than knit it. But it's quite good to try something new. Um, This can't, I can't talk about this under the the kiwi summer kcal because there's nothing kiwi about it patterns from norway and the yarn is probably from germany is that where shuffle pull shuffle from yeah yeah made in germany so it's a very european thing going on over here but i'm enjoying it and also because she can finish little bits so quickly. I was like, oh, and I just did an ear this morning. And I did an arm and a leg yesterday afternoon. There's um, quite a bit of shaping to them, but um, yeah, more to the legs really than the arms. Yeah, the arms are longer than the legs. When I did, was doing the legs, I kind of went, oh, it's not very long. But I guess it's probably about long enough. I just need to um, sew the little holes together where I cast on. Let's like, see, it's in a year. <sighs> okay, I can see how um, the more kind of um, the more kind of variegated kind of yarn would look really cool, but also that might be a new thing for scraps. Imagine all the different scraps of yarn, of like sock yarn. You do a leg from one and another leg from another and arm from a different something else. God, that would look so cool. Um, on the project page, um, if you if you have a look, at, if you look at my project page, you can be able to get a link to it. Um, but yeah, there are some ladies there that have done it um, with uh, mixtures of sock yarn as well, which looks really cool. Um, I feel like I'm waffling. Uh, we're about half an hour in, so um, I might just, I think, just having a look at the clock at the top. So I kind of might wind it up a bit so that um, I have things to do with the trying to make this more like a bedroom than a craft room slash office. Um, yesterday morning, went for a walk down. Um, so, so I live in Tauranga in the Bay of Plenty and probably about 500 meters walk from the end of our driveway is um, the water. So um, we're on the harbor, the inner harbor part of the Tauranga Harbor. Um, and I've showed you pictures before and little videos and that sort of thing. And, you know, if I've taken a beautiful sunrise up, it's there and that sort of stuff. Um, it was a beautiful morning. So I did a little bit of a pan around um so i'll pop it in here as well so you can have a look at how gorgeous the morning was and the tide was in and when the tide's in it's really nice and um the port was quite quiet so um as i'll show you, you as so down the bottom of our road and then when you look you can see all over the port of tauranga and then down to mount monganui then there's mount monganui and then there's um Matakana Island. Yeah. So yeah, it's very pretty. I think it's really pretty. I never get sick of looking at it on my walk. So yeah, I thought I'd share that with you. And um, I will leave you in a minute when I just have to say one more thing, which is um, next time is the Creative Fiber, Auckland's Creative Fiber Retreat. 
um, at and we go to a monastery in in Auckland in Hills, which is very cool. Um, no fly. Um, I will video some bits um, catching up with my friends there, which is so exciting. Um, making some stuff, doing some classes. There's um, quite a cool spinning class I want to do. Um, yeah, and there's um, lots of there is a, a knitting one as well where you like casting on and different cast offs which I'll have a look at maybe as well. Um, all about making pom-poms. All oh, my hats could do with pom-poms, don't you think? And um, yeah, so that's next time. And um, I think that's next time. Yeah, the weekend after that. Yeah, and then the weekend after that is Wellington. So there'll be more, oh look, here's something different. But um, yeah, so I'll try and do a lot about what's happening at the retreat next time. So it's a bit of a... It'll be a bit of a change from here and also because the parents will still be in here so it wouldn't really be nice to get them out so I could then talk to you <laughs> and, yeah it might be hard also I think getting time like quiet time when there's four of us in the little, in the little house very much looking forward to them coming it's going to be cool anyway right here here is Taronga Harbour and I will see you next time. Kakite. Thank you. Thank you.